Hi everyone. So today's video is going to be about when and how to reach out. With the, why did I shoot that topic? Because it's a, I've read so many articles in the paper or on the net just recently about feeling very depressed because of confinement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we live in isolation from each other. We're not made for that. So that's why I decided to do a video on that because there are some very sad stories when some decision cannot be, you know, undone. Okay. Yeah. So, Frankie, right. So when and how to reach out. And by the way, if you like this kind of topic and uh, with me and Frankie we've done uh, quite a few videos in uh, in the self-development section of this channel Rose Dreads and Adventures so please do subscribe like and share thank you very much okay so when and how to reach out right and then I must admit myself uh, even though I am in contact with a lot of people via Zoom and things like that sometimes I find it quite difficult it, and it obviously it's not natural so I think I would say personally, it might be easier said, uh, said than done, but don't be scared to ask for help because, and you won't look stupid just because you want to ask for help. And remember, if you, are, if you, if you feel down, you have friends out there. Frankie, in your opinion, when do we know we need to reach out, in your opinion? When do we know that? I think when we know that when feel a little bit, I used to have them thoughts when I was a lot younger, and you're feeling a little bit down, a little bit lost, a little bit, don't know what to do, you know, a little bit anxious, anxiety. You don't know where to turn. So I think the signs are really there, OJ. What I did was probably go for a walk, get myself out around people, snap out of it, try to snap myself out of it. Then if I couldn't, I'll probably go to the doctor or go and see the doctor. Yeah, so when do we know? So we know, so personally, for example, sometimes I do feel down. I don't have suicidal thoughts. I don't think so anyway. But that doesn't mean I don't feel down sometimes because I find it's quite difficult. Because next month is going to be Gwen's, Gwen's uh, pass, uh, passing, uh, pass, passing away anniversary on the 22nd of uh, February. So I expect this day to be a bit difficult. That I can start feeling it now. So when do we need to reach out? I think one of the things is, for example, personally, rather than keeping the fact that Gwen passed away last year, I just mentioned it every now and then in our discussions as rather to thinking, right, oh, it's not their wife, it's not their friends, it's not this, it's not that, so I'm not going to bother them with it. I just mentioned it naturally in a discussion like I did earlier when we had that network marketing event and when Michael came and all that, yeah, yeah. helping me with the uh, YouTube. It's uh, as well not to be afraid to, to say what's really bothering you in your life, okay, and uh, and why, why you're feeling down. So I think that's important. So when do we know? But we know, I, I suppose, when we start to have uh, thoughts that are not your regular positive thoughts, that are thoughts that's probably dri driving you or pulling you into a dark place and that kind of thing. So this is when we need to reach out. The other question is who? So when do we need, when do we know? And the other question, who do we, who do we the real to? Who do we reach out to? So, for example, myself, when I mentioned Gwen before, I did reach out. I did reach out to you, right? So, who do we? Because you're a friend. So, who do we react, uh, reach to? Who do we reach out to, Frankie? Who, who do you think should be? I would say doctor. Yeah, if your doctor you feel isn't helping you, or sometimes people might feel that they can help you with some tablets. It's up to you whether you want to take tablets because sometimes we can get addicted to um, antidepressants, can't we, Roger? So you can either get antidepressants. I mean, I took antidepressants when I was going through my drug problems. I reached out to tablets at the time and only took a few and then I came off there because they won't get addicted to them. Then I went to go and see a psychiatrist, Roger. Go and see a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist can really tell and see what's going on with you and can really help. Here. You know, so did everything like a psychiatrist, a psychologist, just to make sure that they understand everything what's going on with me. I got as much help as I possibly can to get out of that depression. I went for walks, probably did exercise, went to the gym, associated with the right people, and eventually I snapped out of it. Everybody, Roger, carries depression or carries thought suicidal with them, and it is mental health. I do believe when somebody takes a life, they're suffering with mental health issues. You know, so we've really got to be aware of the signs. Yeah of the dangers, you know, 
of suicide and mental health, spot them very quickly. Emotions, upset, not speaking to anybody withdrawn. You know, sometimes you don't even see the signs. You've really got to be careful, you know? So you went through that yourself, basically? I went through that myself, Roger, yeah. yeah. And now I feel a stronger and better person for it. But saying that, I went through a depression myself when I was in my 20s, and it was quite bad. So I even went to, uh, into an hospital for about a month. And actually, I was one of the people there, one of the patients that only with the shorter stay. But some of them when were, were in that kind of uh, depression for lo much longer than that. Much, much longer. And I even remember, I even went to watch a football match with uh, one of the patients there when when, he, when we both came out. I remember him very well, actually. I can't remember his name, but I think he, he was suffering more. Yeah, so we need we need to... Yeah, okay. Number one, please, guy out there. Please, 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 do not be afraid to ask for help. The system out there is not perfect, but it does exist. It's there to be used, okay? Please ask for help, okay? Don't feel scared about it. Don't think you are going to look silly or anything like that because mental health, everybody on this planet, especially now, are suffering from it in one way or another. And just because I look joyful at the minute, that doesn't mean I, I don't go through some kind of mental health issues, especially as I mentioned two minutes ago, I'm coming to the passing away, uh, Gwen's passing away anniversary. So it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to pretend it's going to be. That's why I'm so happy I can I can mention it. Do not be afraid to mention it. And when do you know it? When you start the support feeling down, when you when you are attracted to a dark place, this is probably when the signs are showing. And if you're not feeling good anyway, please do ask. And do who do you reach out to? Personally, my first step would be friends. But I mean true friends. For me, the other step would be to reach out to uh, the to the doctors and mental health. And actually I went for for some counseling myself for a couple of months, quite a few months before when it became really unwell and I was able to uh, express what my fears were. So don't be afraid. Okay, so when, when you feel down, who? Your friends first for me and your doctors and they will refer you to it. Even if it takes a, a bit of uh, sometimes. Number three, I would say, please, guys out there, guys and dolls, I would say, don't be afraid to ask for it. Uh, Frankie, would you like to add something uh, to about, about this topic, about how, about when and how to reach out? It's interesting you said that, Rosé. What I know when I was young, boys don't like to ask for help because boys don't cry. Yeah. That's what we brought up to believe. So asking for help is a sign of intelligence. So remember, if you're struggling with mental health, always ask for help. It's a sign of intelligence. And the third step for you to transform how you're feeling. We have specialists and medic people in medical positions who can really help our mental health. Really reach out to them and really trust them that they can make a difference in your life. But you know what? That I hope this helps. I hope this helps. That actually is going to bring me to the last word oh, and I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of uh, guys out there and boys we're being told that crying is actually a, um, a sign of weakness but you know what I believe the opposite now I believe that showing vulnerability is actually a sign of strength because it is a sign of strength for me and because if you can show your vulnerability number one you show you are a human being we are not robots we're not machines it doesn't matter if you're female or male we're just not machines so we need to be able to show our vulnerability for me vulnerability equals strength okay guys so if you have any comments or any ex any experience uh, in in this field how you felt whether you felt vulnerable or not so the last one for me vulnerability equal strengths and one of the most beautiful speeches I've assisted to because I am a member of Toastmasters one of the most uh, beautiful speeches I remember is the one where people show vulnerability and don't be ashamed of it don't be ashamed to be vulnerable at the end of the day male or female we are all human beings so guys if you like this kind of topic please subscribe like and share and follow me on Roger Sell World and Adventures follow also Frankie uh, Frankie the wise entrepreneur uh, thank you and see you in the next video and bye for now and keep smiling in the face of adversity thank you guys bye bye now bye bye